Hi, this is Foofles, and I'd like to show you a little bit about using the music sequencer in Little Big Planet 2. So, first of all, we're just going to slap a piece of uh, light matter down to put our music sequencer object on. And we'll find that in a section dedicated totally to music in the tools menu. And it looks like this console kind of thing. And as soon as you put it down, you open up the circuit board. And it works just like the microchip circuit boards. You can, you know, stretch it out to fit as many things as you want. But ha So let's just dive in, and I'll explain all the settings and music theory as we go. For starters, let's try setting a beat with some drums. Okay, so we'll slap that here. And if we go to tweak that, we open up a piano roll. And uh, if you're not familiar with anything musical, well, you're about to be. The most important part of music is rhythm. And to count rhythm in music, we subdivide each measure. Note can be a whole measure, half a measure, quarter, eighth, etc. And by default, we get about two measures to work with in the editor. And if you scale the image of the instrument, you'll give yourself more measures. So let's start with the most important one, a whole note gonna go on this drum and these two notes are a whole measure okay you can scale each note length using L1 and R1 L1 makes it shorter R1 makes it longer you can also scale the uh, volume with the right stick as well as the timbre see it's fading. And uh, so now let's play some half notes, just to uh, show you the rhythm. So, so those are half notes. So you can see each of these dots on the grid is one sixteenth of a measure. Okay, so one dot is sixteen, two eight, four is a quarter, and that's what we're going to place right now. Okay, so we're going to place all quarter notes right now. This is the beat in common time. When they say the tempo in beats per minute, it means how many quarter notes there are per minute. Okay, so let's add some snare. It works just like the regular level editor. You can drag and select multiple things and I'll move it over here. Alright, and I want to add uh, something else in every other beat. So every one, two, three, four, and every two and four. A little bit worn and hard to use. So we have some kind of beat going. Let's add some hi hats. Got a really basic rock groove going on here. Yeah, that's pretty good and. You know, we can copy and paste this as many times as we need. You know, and I'll just put a few, copy them, and paste those. Copy those. At any time, you can press square on this to play from any point you have the cursor on. So then right now, we just have drums, and that's kind of boring. So let's add an actual instrument to the mix. So let's actually add some music and get into some of the more interesting functionality. First off, if we tweak the instrument object and we press square, we open this menu here. And you see we can change things like reverb and echo amounts and the panning and also the key, which will become very handy. So for now we're going to work in E minor. I'm going to demonstrate some things with the pulse wave because it sustains very well. Like I said, you can change the length of the note with the triggers. So we have this. But you can also drag either end and change them. So for example, if I wanted to lengthen it more, I could do that. If I wanted to make the sound fade out, I could sh shorten it with the right stick. I can make it get louder. I can change it. So let's lay down some music, shall we? So 
we have some basic progression here? Now we turn it into chords. So to save time on the video, I went ahead and did the chords myself. But basically, I just copied and pasted and put it on the note I needed for the chord. So that's what we have so far. And say we want to copy that and we want to go with it, you know, so... Uh, just hit the left stick in, like with anything else, a little big planet. You can hear a masterpiece so far. That's pretty cool, but uh, I want to make it more interesting. Well, for one, we can copy all these piano tracks and make it stereo. So, for example, we can select the first pianos and tweak them all. You can hit pan maybe 30% to get to the left. And the other ones we can pan the other way. So now we get it in stereo. I said we get it in stereo. There we go. Now that's not all. We can also change key at any time. Since we specifically stated E minor, say I want to change to A minor. Copy all these pianos. Put them here. Tweak them all at once. Go to the key and switch to A. And you'll hear we switch keys. Now I kind of messed up. I meant to pick E minor and it was stuck in E chromatic, I guess, but you get the idea. We also have separate volumes of up to six unique tracks, so let's do that. Let's lower the volume of the piano. Let's give ourselves two channels. Alright, and we're going to put the pianos in one and the drums in the other. Alright. So this is going to sound much more pleasant. The, the pianos are much quieter, they're not so overpowering anymore, and uh, it's pretty cool. But that's not all we can do with the music sequencer, we can do so much more. Almost anything you can put on the regular sequencer you can put on a music sequencer. Like batteries and counters and tags and whatever. And so let's put some tags. I took the liberty of setting up a little light show for us, and these series of lights turn on depending on what tag's on. So let's uh, put some tags on here, and they'll get fired off in time to the music. So let's start with some tags. Maybe I should turn out the lights to let the show be a little clearer. So let's let that go. So that concludes our very basic tutorial on making music, and maybe someday you'll be able to make polyphonic masterpieces like I do.